What's up, Panthers? Welcome to FIU's Panther Talk, the podcast striving to highlight student voices from around the world and right here in the 305. There are fully online Panthers. You'll hear from your main hosts, Michael Wright, innovator and educator with FIU, and Daniel Coelho, who recently graduated with his Master of Science in Electrical Engineering focused in network security. In this episode, we're trying to grasp an understanding of what our world may look like as artificial intelligence learns rapidly. So Daniel, I have a very real question for you. Okay. Every day, my friends and I, I mean every day, engage in a conversation that at some point devolves into this debate on artificial intelligence. What is AI? This is AI. AI is coming for my job. AI is going to give me a new job. Uh, Terminator. Like that is, you can obviously tell millennial Terminator is just a regular right. thing that with our, and I, you know, I, I think on this, this conversation about artificial intelligence, something that I'm interested to know from, from you, uh, because I think lots of us are, are in these conversations is what do you know so far about AI? And very important for me, remember the debates every day, mm-hmm. where do you lie on kind of this AI debate spectrum thing? So when we're talking about AI, we're just talking about kind of like the realm that sits above, you know, all the little things of uh, deep learning, all um, the machine learning and other things that lie within artificial intelligence, right? Yeah. So when we when you talk about AI as a whole, then yes, some people might uh, say, yes, this is the Terminator or this is like, you know, something bad or something that's going to happen outside of our control. Uh, but ultimately, I truly believe that we are still in control of artificial intelligence. And mm-hmm. with that, I feel like um, when these debates kind of go off realm of the Terminator and things of where it's going downhill, I truly believe that it's not it's not or it's almost never going to get there, in Ooh. my own opinion. That is that's a uh, that's a bold statement. It, it's not I think we can maybe agree with. Right. Like, I think. No robots that we see yet, because now I'm thinking about Westworld. Maybe oh, they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it. What you said there is really interesting. I think <clears throat> you, you you believe you have this hope that where we might not ever get there. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, why do you? You know, um, the the branch of um, artificial intelligence where it's uh, uh, neural networks, right? Um, and that's specifically targeted towards humans and how the brain works, right? And I just just as a refresher to make sure, like, I'm you're the expert here. I'm just want to neural networks. That's multiple knowledge coming from data coming from various places. Uh, well, so it's kind of like a form of artificial intelligence of how you can. Comp- um, kind of like a model, right? So, so, all right. So you have a model and you're, you're using neural networks and you're saying, is this a bird or not? Okay. Like, you know, you send a picture, you put it through the model and it's saying yes or no. Right. Okay. And within that neural network, there's different weights and stuff that it calculates. So pretty much all it's doing is just, it's just pretty much numbers throughout the whole thing. Um, and your target is one and you're getting 0.5 or something like that. And then 0.1, 0.5, and then the weights, you know, they say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And then it turns out that yes, this is a bird or this is whatever you're trying to do or trying to tell it, this is what it is in the beginning. Right. Um, and going back to what you were saying about, um, going past of what we want it to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the thing is, is that when we are creating these artificial intelligence or these neural networks, we're basing it off of what we know as ourselves on, on how to compute certain things. So it's learning from us, not necessarily learning by itself. Okay. But I know that there's certain model. I know (laughs) I I, kind of, I kind of went down that path. So Uh I know certain, um, you know, models do learn by itself and learn from its mistakes. Right. But that's the reasoning why I believe it's never going to, you know, surpass or go up above what we wanted to do hmm. because of that reasoning. Okay. It's never going to want to have that human instinct of I'm better than you or I'm better than this algorithm. Let me destroy it. Yeah. I just don't see that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think uh, so much of us, we we see in these things that we create. Right. And so it then reflects back to us, not just our best, our brightest moments, but also our darkest. I I think a really great representation of that in the media is a a show called Black Mirror. 
Oh, yeah. um, you know, this is one that I, I just recently had a, a huge debate with some friends on one of the the most um, interesting episodes. And something that I think we keep on going back and forth with this conversation about Black Mirror is it, it shows a world where there's like a little technological difference or shift or innovation like or whatever. one moment, a tick. Yes, yeah. yes. But that there's these horrible things that happen. And the question at the end of every episode is, was it this technology, this digital innovation that did this, or did it make us more kind of ourselves, right? Is, is it just more of us out there? And I, and I think one of the biggest fears for that um, comes about with the workplace, with yeah. occupations and, and careers. And so, you know, the second question I, I have for you um, is how do you think AI plays a role in your job outlook, and I'm I'm curious. You're you're a recent graduate. Mm. This question means something very different to oh, yeah. someone who you yeah. know graduated within the last year versus someone who graduated 2010 or 2000, you know, 15. So AI is here. Mm -hmm. It's proliferated. Everybody knows about it. My grandmother's talked about it. How do you think this is going to impact your job outlook? Our other job outlooks. What is the impact of AI there? So it's it's definitely going to get easier in terms of having uh, kind of like an advisor on the go. When people say, oh, reach out or keep reaching out to your LinkedIn, um, you know, what, like whatever you submitted, right? Or yeah. you, whatever you're going into, it's just like reach out to the recruiter and say this. Yeah. Okay, what do I say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. so you just copy the little bio, you put it in chat GPT or whatever, whatever you're using, Google. And it just spits out something. And you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Let me rephrase that a little bit. Or let me just use that and then reach out to them. I mean, that cuts out like 25 minutes of you trying to actually put something really valuable or what you wanted to um, portray or give to this recruiter yeah. in terms of just having the the model just spit it out for you. You know, <laughs> literally, uh, I don't know, maybe three hours before we we sat, to get, sat down together to talk, I just send a a follow-up email. Somebody did not reply to my email. There are like 50 billion people attached to this. Like I need them to do a thing. And I used ChatGPT less as my like copywriter for the email, but really as like this anxiety helper exactly. to it'll be like, oh, that's what I was thinking of sending. So it, it might not be that bad. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, you talk about saving time, but I also wonder too, as this advisor role, if if maybe these large language models, right, ChatGPT, Google Bard, if what they're going to do, if they're going to serve as kind of what we're hoping in academia, right, as uh, inspirations and as these anxiety right. reducers saying like, hey, this thing learned from billions of data points and millions of minds. If this is what we're thinking, you're thinking around that realm, it's okay. Here, here's the the jumpstart. Go ahead. Right. So... Yeah, this this rise in the Jet GPT like kind of came out towards the end of when I was graduating, mm. um, and what I've noticed about that is that FIU is just like, oh, don't use it on essays and stuff. So what I think that these models are doing are actually challenging FIU or these other uh, colleges, yeah, to, higher education as a whole, yeah, to to ask different questions to make it so that it's not so straightforward or it's not something that can just be spit out on a machine learning model. Yeah. I, I heard an elementary school teacher talk about these large language models and saying, you know, what it's challenging us to do is to stop asking our kids or our students to do computer stuff, right? Rephrasing is not something you need a human exactly. to do. And it's challenging us to make sure we're asking them human challenges, human tasks. Exactly. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's exactly what I noticed towards the end where if I just didn't know anything when I was writing something, mm -hmm. I could easily just say, hey, what's this? And then yeah. I'll be like, oh, that's right. You know, and then go back and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing or this one I'm going to be talking or, or the direction that I'm going in. Excellent. Yeah. So. Yeah. A, a starting place. Yeah. Right. Being aware that ChatGPT hallucinates and all that like can make which up is, stuff. Which is the, the dangerous part. Yeah. You know, where it's, it's inferencing what you're writing at the moment. You know, and then collecting all those thoughts through that statement. Have you ever had a, a screen up with ChatGPT and Google Bard and seen the time it takes for one of them to reply back? So, no, I haven't done that yet. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, there's times I'm typing in Google Bard and I swear, I think it's before I press enter. 
it has a fully generated response oh, yeah, right back to me. At least ChatGPT, it kind of like lies to me a little. I think it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, hey, I'm thinking about this. Here, yeah, yeah. here is the response. Like that delay almost makes me feel more comfortable with, with that platform. Mm. So you've been talking about AI as an aid for the job search. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to hear from you. What about the iRobot concern with uh, AI altogether, right? There are people who what they do is what these large language models, these, these different AI tools, what they claim to do. Right? I, I can think just copywriters, uh, individuals mm -hmm. that do marketing and business. I see. And then, and I mean, your particular industry, right? There are mm -hmm. software engineers right now. They code. Chat GPT code. can let someone like me, you know, like yeah. go, hey, what's wrong with this code? Can you change this? I'd like it to look... So I guess, you know, that question there, like, what do you think, how does that impact your job outlook, your job journey, your future focus, how you think you're going to feed your family? Like, you know, that, that really big question, this, this iRobot scenario is what I call it. So in terms of that, I mean, technology does that. It, it's going to do that regardless. We try not, like, we, we're trying not to... Um, eliminate jobs or not it's mm. it's just going to do that yeah um but in in my eyes or in in like in my field you know a new position actually came up and it's called prompt engineering yeah i mean that's crazy because uh, there was nothing like that before until this came about and then now companies are realizing like oh like we can actually use like several of these large language models to do x y z at a faster rate, cut like probably like three hours of work yeah. every day. And also, unfortunately, cut people off. Yeah. But that's just the reality of AI. And yeah. that's just the world we're living in. I yeah. Mean. Disruption innovation. Yeah. yeah. There's two things that come to mind with that. Um, I just was reading an article about how ChatGPT is impacting some of those thinking writing industries. Mm -hmm. And the data, what it showed, and it's... It, you know, the, the people in the research paper said, hey, this is early on. This is kind of what we came up, what we are observing now. What it does is individuals who are high performers, it actually helps them get their work done, but a little bit less of a greater impact than those who are mid-tier performers. They're getting even more work done see, yeah. and not necessarily outpacing those high performers, but they're catching up to. So it's serving as almost this, this equalizer in a lot of spaces to help do the human work better, not necessarily replace, but better. And then the, the second thing I was going to mention is, I, and I think you talked about that, how, yeah, this is like life. These things yeah, happen. <laughs> you know, as someone talked about, um, if you want to see what disruption looks like, look at the population of horses in the United States before and after the, cre the invention of like cars and, and trains and things like that. And I think of one industry that I, you know, I talk about this all the time when people, you know, talk about the iRobot scenario. I'm like, mm -hmm. ATMs at a bank. They do all the banking things, right? Like deposit. What, but if you look at the jobs that were available before an ATM and after an ATM, yeah, it replaced people. But it also made space and room for other uh, jobs, even more jobs, actually. So I, I wonder if our fear of the iRobot situation is maybe blinding us to what you were talking about. The, the field that is probably most prominently engaged in AI has even created a different strand of, of knowledge and, and jobs for that. Are you interested in prompt engineering as a... Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm open to that as well. Yeah. Um, during the course of me learning to be a software engineer, you work with a lot of APIs or anything like different um, uh, sectors to make one thing work. <laughs> so like... For it, it just makes sense to me, and I know uh, prior to that, other software engineers like were like, "Oh no!" Like you know, kind of like the old school software engineers, like, "No, this isn't how it goes." Mm. But in in like now with all of these uh, like models just spitting out, like there's new ones every day. Yeah, you gotta have someone that understands how to use them first of all, uh, like in a safe way. Absolutely, and also how to. Um, use the company's data or anything else that you want it to do and spit out what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. And that's just, that's just why I think prompt engineering is actually a good idea. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, uh, 
I'm really proud of our faculty at FIU. I've been involved in a lot of conversations about um, ChatGPT. And yes, there is a lot of worry about it, right? Rightfully so, right? But there are a ton of faculty and a very vocal uh, group here at FIU that are saying, hey, we need to grasp this, show our learners how to use this tool to be competitive. And even uh, our IoT department, I know, has had conversations, uh, computer science, about bringing in prompt engineering uh, as a, a field study, a focus. And, and I think we're already sure. in the area that I want to talk about next with you. Maybe we've already touched on this point, but mm-hmm. you know, something I'd love to hear you kind of, I've been saying this ridiculous phrase, uh, please forgive me, uh, mentally saute. Sauteing is a cooking style. You just yeah. let the onions in. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want kind of, I, I want your brain to just kind of like, what do you think a future with AI is going to look like? And, and you know, I'm going to make it also, I'm going to get specific and, and tell me what you think a future of AI looks like in five years, then a future, the future of a world with AI looks like in like 10, 15 years, and then beyond that. Like, let's talk about 30, 50. Okay, so the right now of AI, um, so let me just back it up really quick. Yeah. So chat GBT, when it came out and everything, um, I wasn't really surprised. Like, I, it wasn't anything that I was like, whoa, like this is happening, okay? Because <laughs> let me explain why. Yeah. Because um, if you've ever written on Word, or if you've ever written on Docs or anything, it was already doing large language model guessing, you know, or what, what they're doing right now. Yeah. I come from the so, generation with Clippy, yeah. so we definitely, <laughs> you know, Clippy was out here trying to help us all out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and as I'm like learning on... Um, why they, uh, you know, um, um, with OpenAI, why they uh, released it and stuff like that. You know, they already had this. They, they've been had this model already made up and they just weren't ready to release it. Same thing with Google. Same thing with probably every, you know, some, some other company. Yeah. And the thing is, is that they figured out how to make it accessible to anyone without a coding knowledge or anything. They made it happen so that anyone can use it right yeah so now there's this problem where it it, that i mean that is a big jump don't get me wrong like that was that's a lot like right there you know that's a big jump from where we were two years ago imagine imagine like two years with uh before chat uh chat gbt we weren't thinking about this at all and then all of a sudden it comes out and they're like oh AI like this and that that and then for someone like you or myself yeah. I've been studying this for two or three years already they're like uh this is I mean this is cool but yeah. it's not really surprising yes. you know so in terms of where we're going for five to ten years I mean I couldn't guess where we're going next but the only thing is is that the like we already said prompt engineering or or something that brings these things together mm then that's when we're going to see like this this jump in you know creative models where they do other things yeah um you know you said something earlier and i'm, I'm sorry i know you're no, you're sorry. still answering i asked the huge question but i something that i think is really cool about your journey and where we are right now and 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 how you were able to you know you will eventually be a part of the community that makes meaningful changes right through this type of technology you know you you studied this you you are are, are going to get a, a career in this right hopefully the yeah. the, the dream one that you <laughs> yeah, have that yeah. gets pays really well <laughs> but you said a word that i think is so powerful to what we're doing here and you said what ChatGPT was doing what open ai was doing i'm sorry is they were waiting to make this accessible to others mm-hmm. and i think you know the spirit of what you were in an online program Right. You, yeah. you took some online classes, at least. Mm-hmm. Right. To, yeah. to get through your trajectory. And I think most of our, our students here do that. That was making learning accessible. Yeah. And so how this conversation about what is next, what does the future look like? I think I, I, I teach a class uh, in, in our honors college thinking about how does technology impact you in ways that you realize or ways that you don't. And in it, I, po- I pose a question to my students. I say, if you look at the movie Back to the Future, everyone thought, you know what's going to be innovative and life-changing? Flying cars, right? Like, that's the, right. that's the, new, I think even in the Avengers movie, there's a scene where, like, Iron Man's dad makes a car levitate. Like, that's the cool new, 
But the thing that really revolutionized everything was the internet. Right. It made connecting to you in another country, knowledge, all that stuff more accessible to anyone without having to travel. So I really, I appreciate you for bringing up accessibility. I appreciate how accessibility has been kind of part of your journey. And, um, you know, I wonder if, 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 if you agree with the statement that maybe what we should be looking at for innovation is how will AI make things more accessible? Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the thing I was going to say as well, where as soon as this comes out, we're like, okay, how's this going to happen or what's going to happen in 20 years? It's like, yeah. if you bring it back, you know, <laughs> what we have now is very, it's kind of incredible, you know, where you can just jump on and it has everything for you there. Um, when it's on a Google search, you know, it's kind of like a, oh, links here, you got to navigate through it. And, and the large language model just spits it out for you. That's insane. And it's and especially that that takes off so much work for software engineers where if you have a code or anything that's not working, what a blessing it is just <laughs> to ask one thing and then it could guide you through it. You yeah. Know? So yeah. that's that's just making things yeah. far more I, I that I mean I I just that as you said it it was just like oh my gosh. You know I I think we got to keep on going. We've been very positive, and I appreciate. it. I think you're on my AI yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> spectrum side, right? Like yeah, we're, yeah. but there's something about the burden of knowledge, and your degree background is in network security. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk AI, we're talking. You know, I was just telling you about this this documentary I saw on Netflix, and it's right. you know, the title is "Killer Robots," and the entire documentary is about the existential ethical crisis when we allow a device to make ethical decisions like when to take a life or not to take a life mm -hmm. um but i think you know the things that some of us kind of hit home it's like it's hacking right so your background's in network security i'm curious what feelings you have or i don't know maybe hesitations you 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 reserve even in your very positive AI outlook on on privacy with this tool. So first of all, if you're typing anything in ChatGPT, that data is shared. It's through if you do anything on there, it's now it, it now has that information. So be Ooh. wary. Whatever you put in there, it's learning from that and it's keeping it. Oh, uh, okay. so it's cool, open source, cool, 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 <laughs> which which we all know because we're all using it. It's just yeah. you know open source. There's no and also there is like you know the ChatGPT Pro or whatever the yes. four or, or something. Yes. Okay, then there's some difference there, but everything you put on the regular one, it's open source. So definitely <laughs> keep in mind that, and also in terms of the network security side, um, there's really I mean there's always going to be someone trying to hack. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it, it is the dark side of, uh, you know, coding or having um, like an enterprise or anything. Yeah. Um, that's just, it's just going to happen. And the, the things that I also, when I was um, during my studies, yeah. um, doing my master's is when I was, doing the, the network security courses where I had to actually code or do a certain task. I was asking uh, ChatGBT and it was saying, we cannot answer that because you are, um, it was it was thinking that I was trying to hack something. Ah, you know? okay. So there, there are certain limitations when it comes to different things and learning from this model. Okay. But um, as I've seen too on the internet where they try to manipulate the model to mm -hmm. spit out something else, um, and it, it, it can bring you to a darker side. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, yeah. so you, you think just knowledge that it can do that is a way that we should navigate it or, or is there something that we should be doing about these privacy concerns beyond just awareness? So I think, um, you know, when, and I, and I get that I'm asking you to solve the world's problems here, but I just, <laughs> yeah. so I get that, uh, kind of like the, what I've learned too is network security is trying to prevent, but it learns after something. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times it's just something happens. Oh, someone notices it. Okay, it's happening. Oof. This is what we have to do. And then we do reverse engineering. Oh, <laughs> That's kind of what, in my mind, and how, how I was learning 
um, how this security side of things actually happen, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, there are certain things where you can keep consolidated and stuff and use uh, cloud services, but that's only the things that we know that they're already trying to do. Yeah. So in terms of trying to prevent something from happening might actually be that thing that the way that they're going in. That it, yeah. So it's kind of like a, a chicken you know, choose the yeah like choose your choose your side or choose how much you're doing it. Oh. You know? Oh, I get what it really seems is I need to hope that I'm not the first person that messes up or gets messed up by the thing and yeah. just let we learn <laughs> afterward. Yeah. Oh man. All right, so I've got some quick Quick AI questions for you. I just don't want you, I don't want you to think too deeply on it. Okay. I want you to just kind of like spit out what first thing that comes to mind. All right, favorite movie con uh, containing AI. I guess the Terminator. Okay. Right, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is your most commonly used thing with AI in it? Uh, what do you mean, like the software algorithm? But what is the thing you use that's like AI based that you use the most currently? I guess uh, speech to text. Like, okay. you know, where you just go on your phone, it just does that. I want you to understand that I had no point did I identify that that was in this realm. <laughs> and you, I'm just yeah. like mind blown at, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, if you could design a robot to do one job for you the rest of your life right now, what would that robot do for you? Oh, probably cut my hair. Oh, you know? <laughs> Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't Save know. Save a ton so, of money yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think about that. I think answer emails that don't require a ton of thought for me, which I feel like there's a software already out there for it. I was about to say, yeah, oh I think gosh. there might be some automation my stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, and then my last kind of uh, uh, fast AI question uh, w if you had to pick a side on this AI debate, mm -hmm. and let's say it's like the four corners thing, it's like I am, I am not scared. I am very scared. I am excited. I am very excited. Where would you stand in that kind of, uh, in that space? So realistically, I'm in the middle of everything. Oh, okay. I, I have to be only because I'm. I was so exposed to both sides. Yeah. You know, during my bachelor's, I was exposed to the building. You know, uh -huh. like the the colorful side, and then during my master's, you know, kind of like the network security side. So I understand both sides, mm. um, and I can't really choose a side. It's okay. kind of just knowing my place when I'm using AI. Okay. All right, that's oh. fair. I feel like you could, you you copped out on that answer, yeah. but I'll, I'll I'll let you I'll let you slide with that one. Um, yeah, I I I mean I I think we, there's a lot going on on this topic, mm -hmm. and I loved how you had mentioned. Look, it there's this stuff's already been there. All it's mm -hmm. done is it's made accessible, and I think just the awareness of that and and our next steps, like your words on that, are, are really important. Um, I want to thank you for taking your time out today to of kind of bring your knowledge, bring your experience and uh, share that with us. I hope someone hearing this is like, yes, this this is me or <laughs> yeah. I get that or or um, this helped. Uh, I guess if you know, before we sign off, if there's like one sentence, one line, one word you want to make sure that everyone gets from from what you've maybe discovered in your journey um, with AI, uh, what okay. would that be? So in terms of the being scared part, um, I just challenge anyone that is actually, you know, saying, oh, what is this AI? Um, to actually just kind of learn the basics, because okay. once you realize how basic and simple these little tasks are that create a machine learning model or a network model mm -hmm. or a, a, sorry, ne a neural network model, mm -hmm. you begin to understand that. It's not that it's smarter, it's just that it could do things faster. Yeah. So if if you just take a step back and if you just learned AI and you're just already at the uh, large language model, you know, portion of the conversation, yeah. I would I would definitely challenge you to just take a step back <laughs> and just really realize what it takes to actually build a model. Because it's very simple if you actually apply it and try it out yourself. Outstanding. I want everyone to know who's listening to the podcast, <laughs> even though we're a university, we did not pay him to say learn stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. He came up with that all his own yeah. and in that. Well, I appreciate you, Daniel. This was, this was a great talk and a good topic. Of course. Thank you. 
Thank you for listening to this month's episode on FIU's Panther Talk, hosted by Michael Wright. This episode was narrated and produced by Julia Acevedo, myself, and edited in-house by our FIU Online content development team. Until the next episode, Panthers, pause up. <laughs>